Hello everyone. Uh, we have another YouTube participant today, and um, yeah, <clears throat> now this person doesn't have a webcam, but you probably don't notice it because I replaced it with an animation. So I just want to quickly remind the viewers that um, you can get coached without a webcam, and you can still maintain your anonymity if, uh, for this free YouTube coaching sessions. And so with that, uh, let's get started. All right. So um, what would you like to work on today? Um, yeah, I would like to, to work on this, this issue that I have about, um, not getting accepted into any universities. It's like the second year that I'm applying mm -hmm. and I feel like even though there's like nothing I can really do, maybe I can still use my time for still reaching the goal that I have, which is studying medicine. Okay, so I think um, you're, I don't know which country you're in, but I think the admission system is like, um, you can continuously apply for um, universities year after year. Yeah, I'm, I'm in Germany right now. And um, you, you can, you can do like this, this test in medicine, uh -huh. which will improve your chances of getting in. And I did the test twice, which is the maximum amount of tries you can get. Mm -hmm. And I like didn't, I, I was average on, on, I did like average on both times, which like right now I'm not doing anything but praying that I get in because my chances are really low. Okay. And um, so is there, a, so I'm just trying to understand your circumstance. So is it like, um, is there a specific schools you want to get into or have you basically maxed out all the number of applications you can send in at one time? Oh, no. Um, yeah, I, I can explain it a bit because like here in Germany, it's you, you sort of just send out um, the maximum amount of applications like to any to every university there is in Germany. Mm -hmm. And you, you sort of should be happy to get in. It's, it doesn't matter if you're like really good and if you like ace the test. Mm -hmm. If you get in, you should be happy because there are like um, a ton of people who are trying to get in and there's not enough um, room for everyone to get in. So I... it's it's I'm, I'm not really like hoping to get into like a specific city or anything. I don't think I have that luxury. Mm -hmm. So some. Yeah, then, um, so if I'm understanding your situation cor uh, correctly, you can take this test up to two times, and then um, year after year, you can continuously reapply to all the colleges, but then uh, universities for the medical program, but there's no basically guarantee that you're going to get in, and um, you're just waiting to get in, but you're not really doing anything else in the meantime, right? Um, I'm, I'm working on the side but it's not like real work it's like a couple hours a day mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay so what is it what is the problem that you know like what is the feeling that you want to get rid of um i mean shame is like a big feeling of you know i still live with my parents i'm like 22 mm -hmm. and i'm like waking up every day my dad, he goes to work at 5 a.m. Mm -hmm. up to um, 6, 7 p.m. Mm -hmm. And that's just like this kid who's like 22 living in his you know, apartment who like, works three hours a day. And every time he sees me, I just know he's like, I mean, he always asks me like, how, you know, how, how's he looking? Did you get any... New, is there like anything new any news or and like the worst thing is i told him that i like did really bad on the first test mm -hmm. but i told him that i did well on the second test even though i didn't mm. and it's like really weird because i like every time i would like study for the test in the library and it's not like a you know you study for the test and um it's like a test you can really study for. It's like a, similar to an IQ test. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't have anything to do with medicine in particular. Um, 
So I, I think that, I don't know, maybe I was like too nervous or anything. Or I don't, I don't even know what happened because I, I think I had it in me. I have the potential to get a hundred percent on this test and I failed twice. And yeah, I, what I was trying to say is that I, I told him I failed the first time, but I told him I didn't well the second time. So that's why he's like kind of hopeful, even though I know um, I won't get accepted again. Okay. And this test is basically done for, right? There's no more retakes? There's no more retakes, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I think... But it's... Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Yeah. So I just wanted to clarify, it's, it's not like you, if you, if you pass the test, you get in, it's not like that. It's you do the test and then you send it in mm -hmm. with all your previous, you know, resumes and um, report cards and you get better chances of getting in if you have a good grade on the test. It's not like you pass the test and then you get in. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. So basically, even if you get a perfect score, it doesn't automatically guarantee you a spot basically, right? Yeah. 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 Okay, so now you you know you have the pot potential in you is what you said, right? Yeah, it wasn't even close. Like when when I when I studied in the library, I you know it's 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 also about time. Mm -hmm. So you have like ten minutes to I don't know read. No, you you have like an hour to read four texts, which is like one part of the whole test, and you have to like um answer like a couple of questions for every text. And when I was studying for it in the library, I did it in like, I didn't have any time issues. Hmm. But when I was in in the test, it felt like, um, I don't, I don't even know, like, I, I can't, I can't tell you what happened. Yeah. Yeah. I think, you know, um, I was going to start talking about your self-perception of yourself. But I think this exam, I think it was a very stressful experience for you. And how it ended up, like be, be compared to your study environment, like the library. And then when you actually went on to take that test and then that like experience gap between your expectations and how the actual test went, you, say you can't really tell if it was nervousness or whatever but ultimately that test experience really i think left a lot of scars here um yeah i, I get what you're saying um like the first time i took the test shouldn't i then know why i failed it because I, i'm not letting myself you know, I, I won't let myself tell you know, all these all these things because I should know what what happened wrong in the first time, so then it won't happen again in the second time. You know, maybe I wasn't prepared for all these people sitting in this massive. You know, it was like a big open building, which was used for I don't know concerts or whatever. Mm -hmm. And um, there were like I don't know thousands of people sitting next to me, so. Why didn't I you know, prepare for it for the second time? I don't know, I'm like... like yeah, do, you, do, do you know what I mean? It's like... Yeah, Do you, so do you have any idea of why you didn't prepare it? You know, because like you said, like theoretically, all inside of our head, you went in for the first try and then you recognized oh this test environment is really different from my normal studying environment so cognitively you're like yeah okay so for the test i need to second test i need to be more prepared like you know being in an environment and that kind of like time setting and everything so but you're wondering like why didn't that happen right you don't know i um, actually now that i think about it if like the first time i went i um, I didn't have enough sleep and I had like this stinging pain in my back, which mm. like my mind was sticking to for like the entire, like the test is seven hours long. Oh, yeah. And like I had like this, this stinging pain in my back and my mind just wouldn't think about anything else. 
and I was also so tired. I remember, like, for the second half of the test, I would just fall asleep. Mm. So, actually, now that I remember it again, I, I fixed those two issues for the second test mm -hmm. by driving there and sleeping in a hotel next to the test area mm -hmm. so that I wouldn't have to commute there for, like, two hours um, and be really sleepy during the test. And I bought some pain pills for my back. Mm. So and then I deleted all those um, things which were like the reason for me failing the first time, and the second time I failed because um, I think I got overwhelmed with all those people, mm. so I couldn't prepare for you know me being like super stressed out by all those people because the first time I failed because I was too I'm caught up in in like my back pain which. Like for some reason happened during that day. So it was the kind of impossible for me to um, kind of work around an issue which I didn't have the first time. Is like now that I think about it, I don't know why I didn't. Yeah. And remember so, what happened. Yeah. All the. So based on my. Um, how I understand it is. There's a lot of pressure for you to perform really well on this test. There's a lot of pressure for you to get into medical school. There's a lot of pressure for you to prove that you're something great. Um, I don't like, um, the thing is, I don't know if it makes a difference, but it, it's not like medical school. It's like, um, it's just like a university and there's like different subjects. Mm. So instead of like studying like biology, for example, you just study medicine. It's not like a, a specific like school just designed for medicine. Okay. But I mean, yeah. it, it's, it's, it's not really important, but um, I wanted to say, you said like I wanted to be like um, something great, but I'm, a, I'm like just like, honestly, I'm just like super interested in the, in the whole field. And that's like about it. Yeah. And so I think, you know, like um, there's a lot of people who are just interested in a topic, but then they just pursue it like a sort of a hobby. Right. They just um, read stuff like after they search and then they just kind of like casually consume it. But for you, there's a lot of pressure for you to go to university. There's oh, yeah. I'm, a, there's I'm a lot old. at stake here. Yeah. Why is that? Why is it so important for you to get to university? Um, I, I'm I'm getting really old, and you know all my you know all my siblings uh, didn't didn't pursue the academic path, and my my parents or like my dad really put all the resources into me. Like, for example, he. Um, what is it called if if you go like see someone who helps you after school with um tutors? Yeah, like he, he paid like for tutors and stuff and always made sure I he studied with me and stuff after school to make sure I get good grades and he he drove me everywhere, like he even drove me to the um to the test which was like a city away to the he drove me to the hotel which is which makes everything like so worse, so, so much worse. Yeah. So there's a lot of guilt associated with that. And there's a lot of expectations for you to perform well and go to university. But then your reality is sort of like different. And right? there, that's where all the like current stresses are coming from, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's... And even during the test, like, um, you know, Let's say, for example, if you and I were having this conversation like uh, two years ago, and then let's say I was um just asking you about some of the material that's on the test, you would have no problem answering it, right? Because there's like, yeah, we're just talking about the test material. But when I when when they put you in this room, and when they say this is the official test, and this is what matters. So now your mind, it's just solving problems like you did at the library, right? It should be exactly the same activity. But the feeling is so different because the thought is, oh my God, 
this is like really important. There's a lot of things at stake. And if I mess this up, then it's like catastrophe. It's like catastrophe. And I'm going to be doomed for my life. And there's a lot of pressure here. And the brain doesn't like being pressured like that. So like, the brain that I'm talking about is called the primitive brain. And it's the brain that deals with your survivor, uh, survival, like as an animal. So if someone or if a wild animal, right, in the primitive times, in the like jungle hunting gathering times, if I'm outside and I see a pack of wolves starting to surround me, then I get this intense freezing kind of a sensation and I feel a lot of stress, right? So your brain is effectively going through the same thing because it's just backed into a corner where it's this test or you. And so when that pressure just starts building up, it doesn't really matter how much you prepared for it because as long as your brain is thinking that this is a survival situation, then the third test won't make the difference. The fourth test doesn't make the difference. The fifth test will be the same because the experience is created by the thought that this is a lot, there's a lot at stake here and I have to do really, really well or else I'm doomed. I'm gonna let my dad down. I'm gonna let my family down. I'm gonna be a disappointment. And so, that is ultimately what's causing all of the stress, right? Do you agree with this? Yeah, it felt like exactly how you just described it. Yeah. So now that tells us the really, really important thing here isn't actually your performance on the test because like, um, you know, like the test, it's just what you did and it's already done and you got a score and um, there's got to be people who did worse than you, right? Um, yeah, I mean, yeah. Yeah, yeah right? And there's got to be people who did better than you, right? So yeah. from the perspective of the person who did better than you in terms of that test, your score is low. But from the perspective of the person whose score is lower than you, your score is high. But the thing is, your score didn't change, right? Your, you your mean, score like, is the... just your score. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And the thing is, let's say somebody like guessed on a lot of questions and then they got a lot of their guesses correct. And then they somehow got a better score than you, right? Yeah. That doesn't mean they're like necessarily smarter than you. That doesn't necessarily mean you're dumber than them. All the scores are saying is on that particular day, on that particular question bank, the number of correct answers was this. Like that's all the test scores are saying, right? Yeah. So Something I heard you say repeatedly is the word fail. But the thing is, like, you, you said you're waiting for universities to give you, like, a reply, right? Um, let's, let's say a university gets back at you and then they want to accept you. And then let's mm -hmm. say you enter into a university and then you're, um, you know, like, second grade or third grade in that university. When you're at that state where you are a medical student, would you still think of your test grade as failing? I'm like, honestly, I don't like, I could have gotten like 0%. I, I, I really don't care about the test. I just want to get in. Like, that's all I care about. Yeah, right? So yeah. that's what what matters right now is like it feels like failure it feels so bad because getting into this university is so important because there's a lot of shame for not getting in there there's a lot of guilt for not getting in there but then once you get in the test doesn't really matter like 
when you're in um i don't know if this applies for germany but you know like in america there's a concept called like sats right it's a standardized test but when you're in high school sats matter so much and then you know like oh i wish i have gotten a better grade or when you're in high school and i'm taking a history class and then i'm about to get a c it feels like oh my god i'm doomed for life but then the moment you get into a college, like you forget about all of that, right? So what's not, what's really important here is that like the test is, isn't, the test is just a test and the test is just like a measurement of correct answers versus not correct answers. But you're viewing yourself as lacking. You're viewing yourself as someone who should be ashamed. You're viewing yourself as someone to be guilty of. And that's where all this pain and that's where all this stress is coming from. But, but I, I feel like I should I should be guilty because it's like fine if it happened like mm -hmm. the first time. Mm -hmm. And I, I get what you're saying. It's just, you know, the funny thing is I, I'm like, uh, when I told you I was like working three hours a day, I'm like a tutor myself. Mm hmm and I always tell my students, you know, the same thing you just told me. It's, it's, it's just like a test. No one will, will ever ask you for your grades in like a couple of years. It's like, it's like so ironic because I tell them like the exact same thing. Um, But where I was trying to get at is that I really don't care about the score itself. It, it could be zero for all I care. It's, it's if I don't get in, if... um. If no university accepts me, then I'm considering it as me failing the test. Yeah. But if I get in, then I would just say I, I succeeded. You know, yeah. I, the test itself is like really not important to me, like the grade itself. But somehow when I was sitting there, I it's like you said, it was like my, my survival brain kind of kicked in. And... The only thing I could think about was like black and white. I I was like reading the questions and I like it's like, like like you said, it was nowhere near the whole library experience. And like honestly, I'm like having a hard time thinking about like the test itself because my mind does this thing, or like maybe this is just normal, but if like something bad happens, it kinda deletes it like yeah. completely. That's very common for really stressful situations because like it's the same as people passing out when there's too much pain. Um, they literally can't handle it and it just shuts down. So for you, the stress of potentially not doing well on this test enough to get not get into any universities, like that's really too much for the brain to handle and it just shuts down and it just deletes the file bit so to speak yeah that makes sense and you know like um i want to quickly say something about teaching your students right so yeah you may be you may be feeling some guilt because well i didn't get into a university but i'm um, here i am telling other kids to you know like um treat it as a test but the thing is like um michael jordan the basketball player his coach didn't play basketball better than him, right? Yeah, I don't think so. Yeah, and um, Germany has a lot of great soccer or football players, right? Um, you know, like uh, I don't. I'm sorry, I don't know. I don't really know if I don't really uh, um... soccer, but yeah, like the best player in Germany, their coach doesn't play better than them, right? Uh, I'm not German. I don't. I'm, oh, I just okay. I just live here. Oh, okay. Yeah, but you get what I'm saying, right? So like your guidance as a tutor has value even if your life isn't really an embodiment of that. But with that said, now I want to really get into the meat of the problem here. You said you should feel guilty. Let's talk a little bit more about that. Why should you feel guilty? Because how, how can I fail twice? You know, it's like, it's like once it's like, yeah, I mean, it happens like twice and the test results don't even differ that much from 
Like the, the second one is like almost the same as the first one, like how it's just it's so embarrassing. But the thing is, you you just said the score doesn't really matter, right? As long as you get in, right? Yeah, but I'm not getting in because of the score. It's, it's like also something I I'm consider uh, like you have to consider. But you know, like how can you be sure about that? You do you know for sure that you're not getting in because of the scores? Like there's no way for you to co be completely sure about that, right? Um, I would like to think so, but there's like um, there's like a calculator where you can put in everything, like your entire life, like um, what grade you got on your um, I don't know how to translate it, but like on your on your report card, you put all your grades in. You put uh, you put in if you like had a year working in a hospital, you can put in your test results and press end, and it will tell you um how likely you are to get in. Yeah, but the thing it's, is, it's still likely. It's not absolute. Yeah, yeah, it's not absolute. Yeah. And so, like, consider this: there's a there's a person who basically had the same life as you and has the same score as you. But this person doesn't really care about going to university, but he applied to universities anyway, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. His life would be very different from yours because he doesn't really care about getting into a university. But I feel like he would care after like four years of not getting in, you know? Yeah, but that thought only comes from you where you current you where getting into a university matters. Like, uh, but I get what this, you're saying. This person doesn't really care about it, right? So this person would have no problem with it. So yeah. you get what I'm saying, but there's a lot of resistance to what I'm saying, right? It's like the, if if this person exists and. It's just like a selfish person. How can you like wake up in the morning? Yeah. Look into like all these faces were like so disappointed in you. And yeah. you just yeah. leave the house year after year. Like you're like 32 years old by then. Still and... not doing anything. It's you're just like, uh, I mean, yeah, you're careless and you don't care. But at the end of the day, you're just doing nothing. Yeah. And so what I want to really tell you is. That is what's causing your problems right now. Your belief that not getting into university is something to be sh ashamed of. Your belief that not getting into university after four years is something pathetic. Your belief that after all this, you know, my after all your parents and family did that you didn't get in it's something to be ashamed of. It's not universe. It's not the fact that you didn't get into a university that's causing you pain right now. The pain and suffering is coming from the belief that you should have gotten there. You should be better. And you're not. The perspective that you have on yourself, you're viewing yourself as a problematic person. You're viewing yourself as someone who didn't get into university, therefore should be feeling guilty. Mm. But, but there are people who never went to university, right? Mm -hmm. And like Steve Jobs, Bill Gates, all these people dropped out of college. There's a lot of entrepreneurs and successful people who never went to college. There's a lot of people who are genuinely happy with life without ever having stepped on, uh, on a you know, foot of the university. So, University attendance doesn't really determine a life success, right? And moreover, there are lots of people who hate their life after going to university, right? Yeah. There are lots of people after going to university who don't practice 
in their major. There are lots of people who go to university and then regret that decision because of student debt. It's 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 for free in Germany. That's why. Okay. Yeah. It's. Um. I. I also just want to add that um, I. I know you can be the happy and successful without ever going to university, but I really want to be a doctor. You know, mm -hmm. it's like my goal, and yeah. maybe but... we can like. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, like maybe we can like say like, why do I want to be like this specific profession? Why can't I just like be a nurse? Isn't that like the same helping people? But um, I I really want to have, you know. Um, authority in in like helping these people like knowing like being the one who solves the problem not just the one who I don't know brings the tissues and stuff yeah well well yeah, yeah. I know nurses do a bit more than that but I, mm -hmm. I was just saying but the thing is a doctor can be a doctor at age 30 right yeah there yeah for are... sure you can be an old yeah, there are people who become doctors at 32. There are people who pursue the field of medicine at a later year, and then they become like a practicing doctor at 40. There are people who become doctors much later in life. But what there's no race to get to your dream, right? And so there are other ways to become a practicing doctor, right? Like that's that's like my fear is I don't think there is any other ways because I can I can also go the the route of starting as as like a nurse but then ultimately uh, if if I if I was finished then I would be at the same spot where I am now which is having my A level I think. No, I mean, in the sense of um, you speak English. And so yeah. there are ways to be, a, uh, there are ways to get medical degrees in other English speaking um, institutions, right? Yeah, I've, I've also looked into that and it's like eight grand. No, it's like 16,000 euros a year and I just don't have that money. Yeah, you don't have that money right now. But then if you re if that dream really matters to you, then money is just the means of making that. And I'm, I'm, what I'm saying is, yeah, there are reasons why it's difficult, but it's not impossible, right? Um, yeah, no, no, it's not impossible. Yeah, so yeah, it takes money. It takes a lot of effort. It takes travel. It takes a lot of like stress, but I'm saying it is possible. And like you said, there are other things you could pursue in order to get to that dream, you could like, you know, like try one field and then, you know, continuously apply for, I mean, there are so many things that you can choose to do today. I'm sure you can think of one thing that enables you to be one step closer to being a doctor that you can do today. Do you agree with this? That I can do today? Like yeah. Read up on some topics or yeah. you mean? Or, I mean, like, you know, you can research into other affordable uh, medical institutions, or you can look at, like, other alternative ways to, you know, get into a college, or you can look at, like, there are so many things, so many options you can continue to explore to fulfill your dream. There are, there's not one way to make something happen. There are so many different ways of making your dream happen. Right? Yeah. But there even though there are so many different ways to get to this dream of being a doctor, what's preventing you from taking action today is that shame and it's that guilt. And that guilt and shame it wants you to stay this way. It wants you to continue to feel bad. It doesn't want you to escape from shame. It doesn't want you to escape from guilt. That's why your brain keeps telling you, you should feel guilty. You should be ashamed because how can you fail the same test twice? 
These are all things that your brain is telling you so you can stay in one place. Your brain is doing all it can do to put you in the same place and resist change. I, yeah, I think I saw a video on that. It's like, so you don't, um, you know, you don't put too much effort yeah. into something so you can stay safe. Yeah. So you, you said, oh, well, yeah, I could look at other countries, but then they cost like eight grand, 16 grand, right? But like, there are ways to make money, but it takes effort, but it takes time. So your brain is noticing that. And the brain is really good at optimizing and looking at the optimal path to achieving something. So it's really smart in that way. So when it notices, yeah, but if you just wait for a university to accept you today, then I mean, you don't have to do anything. So why go do all these like difficult things when you can do nothing? <laughs> I, I also want to add just real quick. Um, every like every money, like all the money I make from my job, I also save. I have like ten k right now. Yeah, which is, but it's like nowhere near enough. But I get what you're saying. I I could like get like as many jobs as possible, and in a couple of years I would have the money. Yeah, and those but that's I'm... basically like um you know like hustling, right? You're you have a dream that you really want. And so temporarily you like turn up the gas and then you burn like, because that dream is going to be worth it. Like that's what, that's what people commonly call like a hustling kind of a mentality. Right. And so there are ways to make your alternative dream paths happen, but your brain is like, yeah, I mean, we could do that, but you know, if a university just accept us, then we don't need to do anything. So why don't we just wait for that? <laughs> so it's this thought. It's, it's not coming from you. It's coming from your brain that's trying to trick you. It's trying. To, it's, you're, it's coming from that brain that's trying to have the least amount of effort possible. Yeah, I'm, I'm really lazy. You're not lazy. Your brain is lazy. Because if you were truly lazy, would you have taken that test twice? If you were really lazy, would you have driven to that hotel? If you were really lazy, would you have gone to the library and studied? You're not lazy. That's what your brain wants to tell you so it can stay in the same place. So I'm telling you, you're not lazy, you're just the way you are, and your brain is trying to justify all these things so that it can stay in one place. There's nothing wrong with you. There's nothing you should be guilty about. There's like, there are so many people who didn't go to university. And when you're ashamed of yourself or not getting into a university, that's basically saying, all the other people in the world who didn't go to a university should be ashamed of themselves. Like, if that is your worldview, can you think of how energy draining your life would be to judge so many people and not see them for the human beings they are? Like, oh, that person didn't even go to university. And like to spend that kind of mental energy judging other people? Wait, but can I can I also like add something? Yeah. The um, I'm not saying I'm sh I am i am like all like I'm only feeling this, you know, this way. I'm guilty and shameful because the the goal that I want, like the goal that I have in mind, which is becoming a medical doctor, can only be achieved by you know studying, obviously. Mm -hmm. So all the people that didn't go to university didn't have a specific goal which can only be attained by studying mm -hmm. right so like most people just want to make money or want to be successful or be popular or something you know just make a make an honest living and not be worried about, about money so you don't have to 
go to university. I'm just ashamed that I figured out what I really want to do in life, which is being a doctor and helping people who have issues. So I figured that out, which like a, a ton of people don't even know what like they really want. And I'm, I'm like a hundred percent sure that this is what I want. Mm -hmm. And I should be extremely motivated. I should have the drive and I should be able to like leave everything behind in, it in order to pursue it because this is like ultimately what I want. Right? This is like the, the, the biggest goal I have. So how can I not be guilty if yeah, even right. though so, all these, yeah. Again, let's say, let's say, well, not again. Let's say you're, you, let's say you're correct. And let's say you all, you, everything that you said is correct and you should be feeling guilty. Right? Mm -hmm. How does that help you become a doctor? Like, is it enabling some actions today? Is it motivating you to study? Is it motivating you to um, go and try again? Is it motivating you to research? You know, it, like right now, I know it, it doesn't help me right now in particular because it's like you said, and I will definitely work on it because you said it. It's, it's like really true. Um, I, my brain is like kind of freezing me up on you know, doing yeah. anything in order to move forward to for my goal right now because I'm feeling this shame. So but also, I feel like, but yeah. like just just real quick, I also feel like um, if I actually make it, and like uh, all these years where where I felt guilty and shameful will, will fuel my um, well, like uh, how do I explain it? It's like when I actually get in, it, it will be worth so much more just because the fact of me um, f feeling guilty for all these years, if I didn't feel guilty, if, if I was happy with, you know, f not making it in for, for all these years, then I wouldn't have like all this fuel for like actually after getting in, if that makes sense. I don't know if I explain myself. So that explanation of course, it makes sense to what you think, because mm -hmm. that's its justification. Like you feel really bad. Your brain is telling you you're feeling really bad right now. But think of how much it's going to be worth later. But that later, like it's not the, it's not created by you. Yeah, I'm like you're basically right now you have this dream and you know what you want. You want to be a doctor. Now, you can't control anything outside of yourself. You're the only thing that you can control, right? Yeah. So instead of controlling your mind and instead of controlling your actions to study, research other avenues of being a doctor, um, research other ways of making money so that you can study abroad, looking at other ways you can get online education from universities, looking at internship opportunities or looking at externship opportunities, looking at networking, instead of doing all those things that you can do starting today, you're waiting for the world to fix your problems. You're just sitting here like, oh yeah, I'm just gonna wait until a university says, and um, you get in and then, and then let's say you get in there like, you're like, oh yeah, I got into university. Yay, everything's so good. And then, you know, like how long do you think that joy will last? You didn't, you didn't like, you studied for the test and then you got in, right? But then ultimately what enabled you to get in was like this external force this external decision by the universities. And so you're attributing your ha potential happiness to this external thing. When that, when what you can pursue is feeling fulfilled inside. When you get into a university, you're gonna feel good, right? You're gonna feel like everything was really worth it and everything is going to feel great, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That feeling, 
you're able to feel theoretically you're able to feel that feeling today when you think of when you pretend that you got into a university right yeah but i try not to <laughs> yeah yeah right but you right now you're just putting that you're just putting that emotion behind bars you're preventing yourself from accessing that emotion because it makes you feel bad when your reality doesn't match your conditions So, do you want to continue living your life looking at this external conditions? Look, you're, are you going to wait? Do you want to wait for the world to solve all your problems? Do you want to wait for the world to give you permission to feel good? Do you want to wait for the world to let you be a doctor? Or do you want to make yourself a doctor? I mean, but, but I feel like I, I already went like through these phases, right? I, I researched how can I you know, improve my chances of getting in. I found like this test and I put it in my own hands and I went to into the library, which is like an hour away every day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, I, I had I, like everything is already past me. And you you did that one way of being a doctor, right? But there's so many more. It's it's also like, um, you know, why waste a hundred thousand euros if I could like get in and not? I mean, it's not like really for free, but it's like nowhere near anything. Yeah, but it, that would be nice. You know, and also have like this issue where where I'm like going. With the flow, kind of, it's it's like really bad. I'm, it's like you said, I, I'm just leaving it all to the to like external powers and yeah. I'm just like it's it's like um, I'm trying not to say like too much, but like today I was like scrolling to like Doctor K subreddit, and I saw your comment, then I pressed on your profile, then I saw that you were like do, doing these coaching sessions and I just texted you, you know? It's it's like this 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 going I'm not thinking, I'm just like going with the flow. I'm like whatever happens, happens. You know, I I could have also like scheduled this for like next week or whatever, but I, I wanted to do it today. Yeah. Because so I'm not saying like you should feel bad for being bad. It's just how you feel right now. But why so why this why all of this is happening is your survival brain is so used to being in charge so oh but you know like if uh, um, you're going with the flow because that's what makes the survival brain happy because the survival brain wants immediate comfort the survival brain wants, hates change, doesn't want change. So every day, your survival brain is operating you. And it's saying, oh, let's not do that. That sounds uncomfortable. Oh, let's do this. I feel like doing this now. And if I don't do this now, I'm gonna feel, I'm gonna feel bad. Oh, let's do this now, because if I don't do that right now, I'm gonna feel bad. So you're constantly looking for the fastest ways to feel better in the moment yeah i should also mention i am um, i have like social anxiety yeah so and... like your your primitive brain is just operating your life day to day so like in summary let's recap everything that we said today right mm -hmm. so the issue here is that your primitive brain is so used to being in control of your life because you've had experiences in the past where feeling bad has felt really bad and you really don't want to experience that pain. <clears throat> Excuse me. So there's a lot of primitive brain survival happening, like especially from your test and how you don't want to change. 
and how you just want to do the thing that immediately pleases you. The next thing here, the other big part of um, your situation right now is you're not living your life. Yeah, I'm, I'm also not doing anything for like recreational. You're not taking charge of your life. You're expecting the world to do that for you. You're expecting the world to accept you into a university. You're accept. You're waiting. I mean, um, it may be because like a lot of reasons, but ultimately, you're not taking charge of your life. Therefore, you can't control anybody else but you. So when the world doesn't go to your wishes, you just feel really bad. And now combine that with your primitive brain. You have expect you have wishes about the world. Ah, I wish the world to do. I wish the world would do X Y Z. I wish the world would do X Y Z A B C. But then the world doesn't do that, so your primitive brain feels bad, and it doesn't want to feel bad, so it wants to seek the most immediate comforting thing, and then so it doesn't want to change, and it puts you in place. But then that feels bad because you're not taking charge of your life, right? And so you keep on wishing. Oh, I wish the world would give me blah, 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 blah. But then when you do that, the world doesn't meet your demands and you feel bad. So it's like this really um, fantastic collaboration between <laughs> emotional immaturity, not taking charge of your life and primitive brain leading the show. Does that, that, does that resonate with you? Does this experience feel like your life? Um. Yeah, it's exactly like you said, and also, um, I don't, I know we have, we don't have much time, but the every time I would, you know, th there's also like this thing where I can sign up to. It's 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 kind of like the lottery, right? You you sign up and maybe you win. And I can do this for every single university. Whereas if someone decides to not take. Um, up the space that they got, like someone got accepted into, you know, studying medicine, and he he got himself a uh, a spot. But if he last second doesn't decide to take it, then his spot is open again. And if I sign up for this lottery process, I could get the spot. And what I'm like, what I'm trying to say is, it's like super simple. I just have to sign up. It's like two mouse clicks. But every time i think about it i i i kind of can't um pull up the website and do it it's yeah it's like right? this like you said like this it's such a great resistance i i cannot everything that has to do with the topic it's it's like almost traumatizing like yeah. it's like this youtuber that i always watched who did like really funny like medical content and I cannot watch his videos anymore. It's it's gotten really, really bad. Yeah, so your primitive brain is sensing that, like, oh, but if I do this, I'm going to feel uncomfortable. So let's not do this. And you're on your phone watching the next cat video or whatever, right? <laughs> yeah. But like you said, it's so easy. Like, it's all just two clicks. But your brain is like, no, 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 I, no, I don't want that. It makes me feel sad. It makes me feel uncomfortable. So it brings up all the negative yeah. emotions again. So what really needs to happen to uh, what you really should seriously consider is you need to tell the primitive brain that your current life is not a disaster. Yeah, you had expectations, but then they didn't meet. But that doesn't mean that you're a failure. That doesn't mean that you should feel guilty. I know you you continue to think that you should feel guilty, but that's just your brain trying to keep you in the same place. Because, so I'm not saying your primitive brain is bad. Why your primitive brain is doing this is because if you decide, okay, you know what? Yeah, you know what? I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do it. And then you do it. And then you don't get an after that. You're gonna feel extra bad, right? 
And so your primitive brain is trying to avoid that from happening. But so all everything, everything in the primitive brain is based on the assumption that there is a bad thing. But I re what I, but what I really need your primitive brain to understand is not getting into a university is not a bad thing. It's nothing to be ashamed of. Not doing well on a test is nothing to be ashamed of. There's nothing wrong with you. But twice. <laughs> no, twice? You, you think you're the only one in the world who failed that test? Like, who did, like, who got your score twice? No, there there was... are people in America who take SATs multiple times and they never reach the score that they want. So they have more than two tries. So like compared to that experience, your yours isn't really that bad. And again, there might be people who had even higher expectations than you, but got an even lower score than you, right? Um so it's not that like everything that happened, it doesn't mean that your life is by some absolute measure screwed up. Your brain wants to believe that, but there's nothing wrong with you. There's nothing you should be guilty of. There's nothing you should be ashamed of. Okay. Um, like I'm really thankful. I learned a lot today, but let's say I, I fix this whole brain stuff that I got going on. I mm -hmm. kind of beat my primitive brain into submission or whatever. What what can I do about like all these people around me who are not my brain, who are not like my inside voices? They're like literal people I'm living with who are expecting stuff of me like right now. Like if I don't get in this year, it's, it's going to be like, extremely uncomfortable living here so should i just like move out or like what's i'm like so confused and i don't and also like you said um i should take things into my own hands and don't and i shouldn't like depend too much on external things and i, I also don't know how to do you know exactly that yeah so Other people's expectations, like um, we're on limited time, so I'm just gonna briefly touch on this topic. But yeah, I'm sorry. I, I, no, no, I no. Didn't... Other people's expectations are outside of you, right? So I expect, like, like not actual me. So let's say, like a hypothetical, like let's say some person expects you to be a rabbit but you're a human right and then they're disappointed in you does that mean that there's something actually wrong with you no right it's that person who's thinking that guy should be a rabbit but he's not therefore he sucks so that's just his opinion right yeah so another person may say oh um that person should not have gotten into university. And then when they look at you, they're going to be like, oh, yes, they're making the right decision. University suck. And then you know, that they, they make their, 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 their living life correctly. Does that somehow make your life better? No, right? It's that person's opinion. So other people's thoughts and other people's judgment and other people's expectations are not your problems to deal with because it's theirs and this concept is difficult to apply to family because they're so close to you and they have a special like proximity in your heart but if my mom is disappointed at me that's sort of her problem it's her disappointment it's her expectation and it has nothing to do with me. 
And it's up to my mom. Like, I'm not saying this is real. Hi, mom, if you're watching. But <laughs> it's nothing to do with... It has nothing to do with me. It's her expectation. So if your family members are expecting you to, like, get a job or whatever, like, get a university and blah, 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 blah and then you're not meeting it, and they think you're, uh, you should be ashamed... That's their opinion. It's nothing to deal on your end. Because, like I said, it's the same thing as another person thinking you should be a rabbit, but you're a human, therefore you suck. It's the same thing. Yeah, I... But... It's, it's not really sinking in right now, but after I rewatch this, I'm probably going to... Yeah, and moreover, like, um, this couples really well with taking charge of your life, right? So if there's going to be all this guilt for, you know, living with your parents, there's nothing stopping you from moving out today, right? Legally. Like, yeah, you're no, maybe like, oh, it's going to be uncomfortable and it's going to be bad. But legally, there's nothing stopping you from moving out. Yeah, you're right. I can just move. If, if you're a child, you can't because, you know, like ch children have to be um, accompanied by a guardian or a parent. But as an adult, you have all the resources in the world to make your own life. So other people's expectations, let them take care of it. You just take care of your expectations about the world and you take charge of your life. Okay, I will try. Yeah, no, no, but I mean, like, this can, this, all of this can only happen when you really, really accept that there's nothing wrong with you. And um, so, the, I mean, we're near the end of our time, right? But if you do want to pursue like a paid coaching program with me, we can go into more depth. And if not, there are other coach, uh, other coaches for who can who will coach for free for a session, and then I'm gonna refer you to those people. Like, continue booking time with those coaches, and then instead of having this one general session like I uh, you did with me today, pick one issue. Like, okay, I wanna I wanna soothe the voice inside my head that makes me feel bad about these things. You're gonna be able to address one specific thing. And then the next time you can be like, oh, um, how can I be more responsible in my life? You can address that with another coach or me. Doesn't matter. Like when you zone in, when you become more specific with everything, um, you're going to be able to find process. This isn't about like, yeah, so I gave you all these instructions. Now go, go, go. You do whatever you need to do. No, I don't want, I want you to know there are coaches who will continue to hold your hand until you you feel comfortable and you you're ready to step out on your own okay yeah i'm I'm writing i'm writing it down i will definitely think about the coaching yeah all right so i'm gonna end the recording today here but we can uh continue to talk for a little bit more okay yeah uh, thanks all right for everything